So here we go, some DIY plumbing radiator valve swap on a microbore pipework. This is for homeowners who fancy a bash on their Todd or apprentices. First off, we're going to shut the boiler off and drain the heating system down through the actual drain valve that's on this radiator. There you can see they've got an ideologic combi boiler. Oh, find the button, there we go, off we go. So it doesn't kick in and pump any excess water out when we're doing it. So in these lock shields there's a little drain down on the left hand side as you can see. I've got a bleed key inside that and I'm going to open it up. You'll see a wee bit of water squirt out and then we're going to use that to drain as much water out the system as we can. I'm just going outside to make sure that it's draining down because you can never trust what the apprentice says. And then I'm going to open up the bleed points on the right hand side and I'm going to start disconnecting the valve here. As you can see I get a wee bit of water and this is where I find it always handy to have a wet vac in hand. Because I can just suck the water up with a wet vac. Or if you can fit a basin underneath the radiator valve you can stick that under and that will catch your water. Just bear with it, it can be a quite a long, boring process, but it's better to get all the water out and be surprised. So now most of the water's out, we're going to disconnect the valve itself entirely and then catch whatever's left in the bucket with some water, keep the wet back handy and you can actually just let it drain into the tub here and then suck all the water out the tub with a wet vac, which is always very handy. Now my next protocol is get it disconnected completely and pull that nut down that's on the TRV head and get, a get myself access to the o-ring of the olive, the compression olive there. Now normally I would take a wee junior hacksaw and cut it in half but I've came across these 10mm olive splitters which are absolutely handy. You basically just put them over the wee bit of pipe and then compress it and it seems to just take it up as you can see here that's the olive splitters put it on like that squeeze you do have to get a gadoosh there you go that's it split and then the olive just splits off like that how class is that honestly brilliant magic idea great invention 
and would save you an absolute barrel of time if you were doing a house full of radiators. That just slides off. Now, what I'm going to show you next is the tail and the radiator. Now, if you've not got a Rothenburger ratchet set, you can actually use a box key like this. Slides into the valve and you just disconnect it like this. You can just twist it, boom, and the tail will just pop right out. Bear in mind if it's not completely solid, but yeah, these are really handy to get them out. Majority of people have box keys, apprentices, and you can buy them really cheap, but much cheaper than what a Rothenburger ratchet or spanner will cost you. So I've actually put the rad tail in and missed this bit of the video, but I just used some rapid blue paste which will put the rad tail in. You can see you just compress it in, twist it in, it's soppy. Then you wipe off the excess glue. Um, better than PTFE tape, I prefer it. And so next up we're going to put the nut and ring on, which is this wee nut here, followed by the 10mm reducing nut, which just pops onto the pipework. Actually, that was the 8mm one, and then I went for the 10 right here, boom. So I've used Danfoss rad valves here. As you can see, look, see that little bit of copper? Make sure that's right at the top of the reducing set, that means it's slipped on properly. So, and then I'll use this Laco Slick Tight, which I basically use in all my compression fittings. Just completely paste everything up, it just helps it seal, it helps you get a good, it helps stops the compression nuts creaking, just gets you a good seal on it. Now when you're tightening these radiator valves in, I always give my radiator valve a knock on the back of it, right onto the tail. So first of all, I'll just get them all tightened up, you should feel absolutely zero resistance when tightening the nuts on. You should be able to tighten them up a wee bit with your hand and then you go see me knocking it on. That gives it a full slip right up to the end of the tail. Just means it doesn't leak and it's not right on the end of the fitting. So yeah, as I said, there should be zero resistance when you're tightening these up until it gets to the end when you're getting your final tighten on. Then when you're tightening that bottom nut, it'll go tight and then you give it another nip and it'll like crack and compress onto the nut. And then just keep going until it gets tight and then you get a half nip up, boom, and you're soft. And then clean all the paste off of your uncle. And then that little plastic bit there, I always leave that on and give the other nut on the tail a final tighten. And that just means I don't damage the valve or anything like that. As you can see, I never over tighten anything because it just means you can get a wee nip up if need be, but if you over tighten it, then you're snookered. Twist this plastic cap off, get your Danfoss radiator head, make sure it's fully open position, mark 5, and that will just pop on there, no problem, and you just spin that little bottom bit, and it'll tighten right on, and that's you sorted. And then just repeat the other side for the lock shield, and you're good to go. How easy was that? If you enjoyed the video, drop a follow. And that's the other side. Boom, sorted.